Well, di diabetes can lead to a list of health issues from high blood pressure to liver and pancreas damage. And November has been designated Diabetes Awareness Month, and doctors are working to raise awareness about the impact diabetes can have. The only known cure for type 1 diabetes is a pancreas transplant. And joining me now is Danielle. Diffaball, a Georgia resident who underwent a transplant at Mayo Clinic to talk about her experience. She's joining us now to show us how her life has changed. Good morning, Danielle. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Can you just tell us what is your history with diabetes and when were you diagnosed? So I was diagnosed in 1992. I was six years old. Um, I was always what they called a brittle diabetic. I had a really hard time controlling my sugars. Um, you know, and, and growing up diabetic, it, you know, it causes you to just change your entire life. Um, and so I kind of went through life a little bit different, tried to be as normal as possible, um, had some, some different illnesses and some different problems with my diabetes. Um, and then as I got, grew older, you know, had damage from it. And when did you first learn about a pancreas transplant? So um, I actually went into kidney failure um, and we started looking for a kidney transplant um, due to my diabetes. And we went to Mayo Jacksonville and saw Dr. Jarmy. And he looked, looked at me and my mother, actually, who was there with me at the time. And she, he says, why don't you want a pancreas transplant? And we kind of looked at each other kind of just in awe. We were like, we didn't realize that was an option yet. Um, and so that, that was the first time I heard of it. Well, that's an amazing surprise. And how was that process? So the process to go through for transplant, it is pretty intense. Um, there's a lot of testing and a lot of appointments. Um, they packed it into about a week long visit there down in Jacksonville. Um, and, you know, it's it is a lot to go through. But the team there was amazing um, and just helping with everything they could. Um, and you know, you go home after that week and you wait for a phone call. So, <laughs> Yeah. And how long ago did you have that transplant? And can you tell us about your journey now since you've had that? How has it benefited you and what is your life like now? Yeah. So it's been about two years now. Um, my transplant happened on September 7th, 2019. Um, and, you know, my life since transplant has really just been totally different. Um you know, it's it's funny when you grow up diabetic and you've just always been diabetic, you don't realize kind of the things that you miss out on. Um, the main difference, I think, now after transplant is just having spontaneity back. Um, you know, you don't have to plan for everything. You don't have to eat at a certain time. You don't have to carry your blood sugar machine and your insulin with you. And, you know, you don't have to get a doctor's note to fly somewhere because you're carrying um, medicine and needles. Um, you know, so it's, it's definitely brought, you know, a, kind of a normal life back to me as opposed to the life I had um, and allowed me to do things that I hadn't been able to do prior to that, you know, getting my transplant and not being diabetic anymore. Wow. Yeah, my best friend, she has been living with diabetes her whole life as well. And, you know, I know how hard that is for her. So with this transplant, I mean, does that mean that you don't have to do the insulin shots anymore? No, uh, I don't check my sugar anymore. I don't take any insulin anymore. Um, it took a while, but I don't even think about what I eat anymore. Um, I actually remember a really specific point after transplant. You go back for a lot of checkups and stuff like that. And I'm still wearing my blood sugar um continuous glucose meter and Dr. Jarmy looked at me he said take that off you are not a diabetic anymore and it was just so normal for me I was like okay I will oh wow that is truly amazing such a great feeling and you know now we're kicking off the holiday season and celebrating all these wonderful holidays and what message do you have for your donor's family oh um so you're not allowed to know who your donor is of course um and, you know, you write a letter, but they don't always answer back. Um, if they're listening, I really just hope that, you know, from the bottom of my and my family's heart, that we are so grateful for my second chance of life. Um, sorry, it's emotional. And that I, I live my life not only for myself, but also to continue the legacy of their loved one. Um, and I hope that I can, you know, do them proud. 
Well, that is so amazing. Thank you so much, Danielle, for sharing your story with us. This is very inspiring to those who are battling with diabetes and, you know, Congratulations to you for being able to move forward and live your life, you know, the way that you've always dreamed of. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me.